Okay, I, I, I guess it's a good time to start because <laughs> it's very brief. But uh, hi everyone. Uh, today I'm very happy to have this all as part of the Climate Repos Repository Challenge. We have Lincoln, who is a, is, is, is a, a lecturer at the University of Sussex. And Lincoln is as well fellow of the Software Sustainability Institute. He received a PhD in Cognitive Science from Macquarie University in Australia. And he has followed by postdoc in Rabot University and University of Cambridge. Uh, while the original research focused more in cognitive science, since leading a large multi tab replication attempt, his recent work has focused more in meta science. His interest in meta science inclo includes the foundation of a statistical inference and the replication crisis, Bayesian statistics and reproducibility. So thank you, Lincoln, for uh, joining us. Uh, looking forward to hearing more about this very recent interesting study. Uh, thank you. Um, so today I thought I'd just take you through a recent paper that we published where what we try to do is uh, take an issue of psych science um, which is a high profile journal in experimental psychology and see if we can uh, reproduce uh, the numbers that we see in those papers. So what motivated this is that we see the dot sharing has increased dramatically over the last few years. Uh, this is probably spurred on by the fact that by sharing data you can get a open data badge and this has a sense of like lending more credibility to your work. Um, now, what we wanted to do is we wanted to test how effective these data, open data badges were. So a little bit about the requirements for uh, what you need to do to get an open data badge. Now, there's some minimal sets of requirements and then there's requirements that vary according to the journal. So the minimal set of requirements is really that you have some digitally shareable data on an open access repository, something like the OSF, that you have a data dictionary, for example, a code book or some metadata describing the data in sufficient detail so that you can actually uh, give it to an independent person and they'll be able to reproduce the reported analyses and results. And of course, uh, when you put anything on the internet, it needs a license. Uh, and so an open license is also usually a requirement to get one of these open data badges. But these requirements do differ by journal. Um, and so uh, the psych science requirements are a little bit different. So psych science in their author guidelines also suggest a, uh, some additional things that are required. So they say that the conditions for getting an open data badge uh, you need to make your data publicly available in a, in a shareable uh, format, uh, all the data to reproduce the reported analyses. And importantly, this includes annotated copies of code or syntax used for all exploratory and principal analyses. So there is that like last sentence there in those psych science requirements that was really the key motivator for us, um, this idea that you can, uh, that you can reproduce everything and that there should be that code there. But I'll talk a little bit more about these requirements later. Uh, so how this whole project, um, well, so, so our, our kind of main idea here was to, to see if we could test the, like the effectiveness of these badges by seeing if we could actually reproduce these results, right? So our reproduction is used as a proxy for like the effectiveness of these badges. Uh, and so the outcome was this paper that we published, uh, came out earlier this year, came out in Psych Science, which was nice because that's the journal that we targeted. So how this whole thing began was with a tweet by Nick Brown. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people in the open science community know who Nick Brown is because he uh, has been involved in a couple of high profile um, kind of data sleuthing attempts. Uh, and Nick put out a tweet, rather cryptic tweet, uh, about a secret project and the people that replied to the tweet in the DMs uh, were told about the project and the project was uh, was this reproduction attempt. So initially there were about 13 of us, um, there were a couple of dropouts and a replacement and we each got about three papers to reproduce uh, and they were a range of different uh, kinds of studies that used a range of different uh, 
kind of software. So there was some Excel, some MATLAB, R, SPSS. Um, I don't think there was any Python. Uh, and they were assigned uh, in a way that matched the uh, reproducer's expertise. So I personally was assigned uh, three behavioral studies or meta-analyses that were done in R uh, and one EEG study that was done in MATLAB. And this reproduction process was split into two parts. In the first part, each of us went out and tried to independently reproduce the, uh, the study, and we wrote a report of our experience and the findings. Now, this was really free form. People took different approaches. Uh, some were more narrative. Some people wrote code. Uh, my personal approach was to write uh, a lot of code and to try to create these reproducible documents that um, could, so I uh, was kind of really into CI CD at the time. So everything builds through GitHub Actions uh, and produces the document, uh, all the code to download, all the data from the OSF was all in these reproducible documents. But some people used more narrative approaches about their experience. So it was quite varied. We didn't put any restrictions on how people did that first stage. Uh, then in the second stage, all the reproducers for a specific paper came together and they discussed their findings. And from that, uh, we produced a second stage report. And in that second stage report, each person rated uh, the reproducibility uh, of their assigned articles based on their individual experiences and also on the group experiences. So we had individual ratings and we had group ratings. Because there's a little bit of variability in uh, what people can reproduce, right? So something that might be reproducible for one person might not be reproducible for another person because there's various different kinds of expertise. Um, some people are uh, better at sort of reading between the lines of what was done. Uh, some people are uh, better at getting into the head of the researcher when things aren't explicit. Uh, these are all problems that uh, impact reproducibility uh, and cause this variability in, uh, in these reproduction attempts. Uh, so our little initial assessment when looking at these repositories is uh, we saw that all of the repositories at least contained some data. So that's good. They All of them had some data. So they met that minimal requirement, uh, at least superficially. But only six of the 14 um, well, six of the 14 didn't provide any code at all. So if you remember that psych science requirement is annotated copies of code or syntax used for all principal uh, and exploratory analyses. Um, so right off the bat, we can see that if we're gonna follow those psych science guidelines exactly, uh, there is you know, close to half of the papers that don't meet those psych science guidelines. So we're kind of off to a bad start, right? And I'll talk a little bit more about this later, um, uh, about why there is this discrepancy between what the badges, uh, what the requirements say and what people actually did. Um, so that meant that for a lot of the papers, we were gonna have to write code uh, ourselves. So all our first stage reproduction attempts and also the second stage reports are available on OSF, so you can have a read of them. Like I said, the first stage reports are really unstructured. Uh, some were more narrative and some people try to reproduce these, uh, try to create these uh, reproducible documents, like for example, myself. Um, I'll just take you through like a couple of the papers just to give you a sense of what they were like. So study 110 uh, was an EEG study. They shared data from the experiments, from four experiments, uh, include EEG data and behavioral data. They included logs uh, for the number of rejected trials, and they shared some MATLAB code for the uh, EEG uh, behavioral analysis for the artifact rejection um, and for the ERP analysis. There were a couple of issues. Uh, one, all the data was in zip files, which creates a single point of failure. So I don't recommend sharing files zipping them together, zip file fails, you've lost all the data. There were some issues with the code, for example, hard-coded file path names, so they had to be edited. Some dependencies weren't specified. Uh, so this led to some difference in uh, who was and wasn't able to produce, reproduce some of the results. So we had, so I have EEG experience, 
So I could see by the function names what some of the dependencies were. There were some non-EEG people that couldn't do that, but in no nowhere with these dependencies uh, specified. There were also some issues in uh, some of the degrees of freedom for some of the t-tests. Uh, it seemed that um, there was some summary data in some summary statistics in the data file that might have been included in the analysis. And there wasn't great metadata. Uh, there was a note on in the wiki on the OSF repository about uh, the metadata being incorrect that people should they should have just edited the metadata. Uh, next, we had a behavioral experiment. This had uh, the data as a, as a CSV file, but it had no analysis code. Uh, it had a bunch of different tests, including power analyses, descriptive statistics, some PCA, uh, and some different kinds of progression. Uh, because it was no code, the reproducers recoded everything in R. Most of it was reproducible, except for the logistic regression. Um, but one reproducer also wasn't able to reproduce one of the power analyses because uh, one reproducer tried to do it in R and another one did it in G power. But in nowhere in, in the manuscript was the software specified, right? Um, and I think if you're using just, because this is probably something that's important to the people in this room, uh, if you're using open source software, please cite your software. because Us people that work on open source software, we need that credit for uh, for a career advancement. Um, 114 was a, a complex study with lots of different uh, kinds of experiments, some DNA testing, um, placebo uh, and drug administration, some psychometric testing. They had uh, the data shared in some Excel files and they had the analysis code cut and pasted into one of the sheets on the Excel file. And the analysis included some ANOVAs and t-tests. Now, this was fairly easy to reproduce using the supplied code. Um, I was reproducing this one. I didn't know that the code was there. So I pulled the data straight from the Excel file um, and, and recoded everything. And I was able to reproduce it. And only after doing this did somebody say, hey, the code is in the Excel file. And I went in and looked in the Excel file and saw the code was there. Um, don't put code in Excel files, <laughs> put them in their own files. Uh, it's just, you know, you, sh it shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't have to be cut and pasting stuff to try and reproduce something. Make it shareable, uh, reusable, interoperable, all those kind of fair principles that we know from data sharing. Um, it was also heavily pre-processed. It would have been great to see some of that raw data. So like I said, our aim was to measure the effectiveness of these of this badge policy and our reproducibility ratings are really a proxy for that effectiveness. So we didn't really have a formal criteria, uh, but uh, we used like the following as a guide that the result should be um, uh, at least be reproducible by a competent external researcher such as a PhD student. Okay, so this is just a, a kind of big overview of it. Only one of the four was exactly reproducible. Um, so that means there were no deviations from the reported results. I will say, even for this exactly reproducible one, there were still issues with software rot, with version numbers for packages. Um, I had to use a Docker container with old versions of R and dplyr for everything to run. Uh, so even if you produce all the code, there are still issues around dependencies and software versioning that is important to take into account. Um, three were essentially reproducible, so there were only minor deviations things like rounding typographical errors. Uh, six were partially reproducible. Um, partially reproducible is probably the most interesting because it highlights some of the area, the, some of the issues around sharing data and code. Um, some reproducers were more experienced or were able to fill in the blanks while others found that harder. Um, and uh, then one was mostly not reproducible. So there were major deviations and we could only get a few numerically consistent uh, results. And um, three were rated not at all. Uh, so we weren't re able to reproduce anything. So I had one of these that was not reproducible at all. And the data just didn't match, didn't have the right number of participants in it. So you can guys can take a look at this in, in your own time. It's just a high level summary of some of like the issues that we found. But I want to jump back uh, to just some of the key issues that we that we picked out. So lack of documentation and code. Um, there were uh, there was a big problem with 
um, things like metadata and clear descriptions of what data belong to what analyses. Um, there are also issues around random seeds. You should set your seeds if you're doing anything that involves something like bootstrapping. Uh, there were also things like um, copy and paste errors. Uh, and when code wasn't provided, it tended to be, the descriptions tended to be uh, not sufficient enough for us to be able to figure out what was going on. Um, and then some data storage issues, corrupt the files, stuff in zip files. That's just bad practice because it's going to lead to these kind of single points of failure. Um, some data specific issues, not providing raw data, data being heavily processed. It's really I, better if people provide raw data and, uh, and clean data and cleaning scripts so that you can track that process, so you can audit that process. Data not being labeled correctly was another big problem. Um, and then lack of analysis code, uh, lack of modeling code, not including dependencies, um, versions of packages not specified, uh, this is really important, especially if things are changing, uh, especially if there's breaking changes in uh, in packages like what happened to dplyr uh, a few years ago. Now, just jumping back to the badge requirements. So, like I said, um, the psych science badge requirements include that that requirement to share code, uh, and we found that this just wasn't done. Um, there were a lot of uh, papers that weren't sharing uh, code or sufficient code. So why wasn't there code, right? So it turns out um, that uh, while the author guidelines specify code, uh, the OSF guidelines and the open practice disclosure form, which, uh, which is what authors fill in to get that badge, don't make any reference to sharing code. So there was a mismatch between these two requirements. So author guidelines said share code, but when people filled in the forms to get the badge, it said nothing about code. So this is a problem. Uh, and so this led to a lot of back and forth between the editors and us, and then led to a one page editorial note being uh, appended to the start of our paper. Um, and this editorial went into uh, this discrepancy. And some, some good outcomes of this is that this open practices uh, disclosure form has now been updated to provide better guidance. So this is great. Making your work reproducible is hard. Better author guidance is good. Uh, and then several papers have had their repositories updated to fix some of the issues that we identified. This is also great. The reason why we do this is because we want to help people. We think that most scientists want to do the right thing, but doing the right thing is hard. You don't always know what you don't know. You don't always know uh, when things that are obvious to you are going to be opaque to others. And in fact, uh, some of this experience has actually motivated a, a pilot program that we have at Sussex uh, in the psychology department at the moment, where we have an independent reproducer who is in the room today as well for the, for the Q&A. Um, where she tries to reproduce papers from researchers in the department. It's a voluntary thing that can submit a paper. Uh, and that really helps people to figure out where uh, they haven't specified things in enough detail. Um, because ultimately, that's all we want to do is we want to help people do better because they want to do better, but uh, they need some, uh, some guidance. Uh, so that is all I'm going to say. I'm already way over time. Um, so I'll stop speaking, uh, speaking there.